EBRD is already very much involved in, in the key areas for, uh, to ensure the sustainable development of the economy. Uh, to mention, uh, for example, infrastructure. If we don't have a modern uh, infrastructure, modern roads, then uh, uh, we will not succeed really in anything. EBRD is helping us not just with the money, not just with a good investment, but also with improving our governance, improving uh, the uh, political institutions and the public institutions. If you speak about fighting corruption, which is the biggest problem which we face in Moldova, and we will not just sign the anti-corruption initiative with European uh, with EBRD, but I'm sure that they will help us uh, to <clears throat> put these policies into practice. We are going through a very difficult period. On one hand, uh, yeah, we are able to celebrate the results of our previous uh, actions, uh, visa-free regime, uh, free trade area, which we will sign an association agreement, and these are extremely important events and developments for our society, for our economy. So on the other side, uh, we see these unprecedented dramatic events uh, unfolding in, in Ukraine. And of course, uh, it presents a huge uh, problems for us in terms of security. Uh, and we hope very much that what happens in Ukraine in the first place will be normalized, and that the international mechanism will be put into practice and we will see a, a, the, uh, the uh, stabilization of the situation, the stabilization of, of the situation. But we also hope that we will not see a spillover kind of effect onto uh, Moldova. And of course, the second big worry is the, the uh, impact on our economic development, because uh, we uh, still have a very active trade with countries on the east of Moldova, Ukraine, members of the Customs Union. And we see already, uh, not just because of the objective kind of developments, but some, some decisions uh, which had an effect on our trade with some of those countries. So in case, God forbid, the situation worsening, it will worsen, then unfortunately I'm afraid we will see a quite strong impact on our economic uh, situation. The Western Balkans at this point in time have never been more stable, I'd say, and never more devoted to their European prospects. Of course, a lot of work is still ahead. First and foremost, identifying solutions for those questions which have remained open from the times of the most recent crises in the region. I have in mind the functionality of Bosnia and the unblocking of the European integration process in Macedonia. The encouraging thing is that Serbia and Kosovo have established dialogue and initiated a process which will, I'm convinced, give a strong contribution to the stability and the economic and democratic prospects of the region as a whole. Naturally, all the issues related to the security of Europe are interrelated. Ukraine is not far away, it's just the opposite in fact, and I believe that the knock-on effects of the crisis in Ukraine are very strongly felt in the Western Balkans. That's why we have such an interest in renewing dialogue, going back to the diplomatic search for a solution and contributing to the renewal of stability in Ukraine, the creation of conditions for the economic, democratic, pro-European development of that state.